Now, the Red Cross says the Ebola virus could be contained within four to six months with the right course of action. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization says it's working with partners in the three worst affected countries to see if a blood serum could be used to help those affected with Ebola. Now, this is how it would work. The blood of Ebola survivors would be taken from them in the same way blood is donated normally. The important thing here is that their blood contains antibodies to Ebola, red and white blood cells, and a number of other cells will then be removed. Now, the resulting serum would be given to patients with the virus. The antibodies could help them fight off the virus, but the donors will need to be screened for hepatitis and HIV, and hospitals would need to have the facilities and the staff to produce, test and administer the blood products. At the moment, many of them are struggling to provide even basic supplies and personal protective gear. Here's more from the WHO on how this would work. This is a procedure that needs to take into consideration the safety of a donor as well as the safety of a recipient. So great care must be, uh, uh, must be taken in, in assuring that the, the blood which is used for the, tr for the trans uh, transfusion is devoid of infectious agent uh, for Ebola, for co of course, but also for hepatitis, for HIV, and a few important uh, pathogens. So in terms of, uh, of uh, serum and, and collection of serum, there are partnerships which are, which are starting to be put in place to have the capacity in the three countries to safely uh, extract uh, plasma uh, and, and uh, make preparation that can be used for the treatment of infected patients. OK, we can talk now to Ian Jones, who's a professor of virology at the University of Reading. He joins us now live from London. Thank you very much for talking to us. Um, this is a tried and, and tested uh, procedure, isn't it? The administering of serum. Why hasn't this been introduced earlier? Yes, you're quite right. It is an established procedure. Effectively, an individual who survives the infection, remember we normally focus on those that have died, but actually a, a reasonable number survive. And just like being vaccinated, they will contain antibodies which can uh, neutralize the virus and can help recovery. I think the reason it hasn't been tried so far is the infrastructure wasn't in place to collect that serum. And also the number of patients, of course, was, was fairly small. And so whether or not it would have been worthwhile with that type of number, it would have been unclear. Now, we've already highlighted the complexity of this clinical process, haven't we? And of the, 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 the kinds of requirements that are absolutely necessary uh, for this to be successfully uh, carried out. These are, these are things like uh, uh, hospitals with facilities and trained staff. These are things that these countries don't have. Absolutely. And uh, while this is uh, a reasonable thing to, to try and put in place, why not if it helps some people? It would be wrong to see this as any sort of way of uh, stopping the current situation. As you already pointed out, the blood needs to be screened, the plasma needs to be collected, and not least, you have to get at the people who are infected and, and hopefully in time to give this type of transfusion. So it is, it, it, it's, it's going to be suitable for a small number of people, but it certainly won't give rise to uh, the end of this epidemic. Now, um, I don't know if you're aware of that line coming out of the uh, Red Cross that we've certainly been reporting, and that is a, a fairly optimistic note that they're striking. They're suggesting that within four to six months that uh, this crisis could be contained. Uh, is that something that you share, that, that modicum of, of optimism? Well, I, I mean, it certainly can be contained, and that, that's a, a, a message that needs reinforcing. Look at the Nigerian situation, the same virus introduced into that country, now being declared Ebola-free. Uh, what needs to happen is all on the ground in West Africa. And whilst we may consider serums and antibodies, vaccines and drugs, these are really not going to affect the current situation. The logistics need to be put in place, and with the recent uh, up grade of resources from international donors, I think there is a chance that this could now happen. So far, of course, it's been woefully inadequate. Okay, Professor Ian Jones, thank you very much indeed.